I'm gonna teach you everything you need to know about growing pineapples at home and show you the exact supplies you need to grow giant healthy fruits just like these. The best part, using my method, you can grow a pineapple plant anywhere in the world. You don't have to live in a warm tropical climate like I do. My name is Darcy from Darcy'sville Offshore. Those of you who know me, I have a successful fishing channel, have my two boats right here, but another big passion of mine is gardening. And I have been growing pineapples in my garden now for close to a decade, and I'm very excited to show you all the techniques that I've perfected over the years. I live down here in zone USDA zone 10B, which is really the optimal conditions for growing giant, healthy plants and fruits. You can see my pineapple garden is exclusively a container garden. I started my very first pineapple plant from a store-bought pineapple. So there's four different methods of ways for you to grow pineapples on your own once you harvest your first pineapple plant. Once your plant actually starts fruiting, as you can see, this is a, a ready-to-go pineapple that we're gonna harvest here in just a second. But the mother plant, she will actually never fruit again. So once we take this off, she slowly dies back, but she has a whole bunch of babies that grow, which is what you want. So right here, I'll pull this all down so you guys can see it a little better. From the flower stalk or the fruit stalk right here, these are slips. These are two brand new plants growing off the main flower stalk. And that is what you want to plant. This is what commercial pineapple growers use. They're not using crowns because those take forever. They're using the slips and the suckers. These are slips. The suckers come from the leaf access, right? Leaf access right here down below. And they come from all different sections of the leaves. So this is another big sucker that will be replanted. But these would be your next crop or your ratoon crop. The first crop is your crown. And then also you have ratoon suckers which grow from the, from the actual stem underground. And there's a little nub growing right here. You can see that's a ratoon sucker and all of these Little babies are feeding off the mother's established root system. So she slowly dies back and she feeds all of these. So there's, we have four babies growing here. You could leave them there. I don't recommend that. They compete for light and, comp and nutrients. So I pop them off. And I'll just show you quickly with one of these slips. It's very easy. It just pops right off. And when it gets to about that size, that's a perfect size to grow and plant, which we're gonna show you how to do in here in just a second, as well as the crowns. But this will be its own fruit, its own plant, and in about 18 months, you will have a fruit growing from this pineapple plant. So really what you want are the slips and suckers. If you have any friends that can give you slips and suckers, I recommend that you try to get those because a crown takes the longest. Let's go ahead and harvest this juicy fruit. And really the main, reason you can tell that it's ready to be harvested is because of this gorgeous yellow color, golden color, whatever you want to call it. Also, if you put your nose next to it, you can smell that delicious pineapple scent coming from it. So it's ready to be harvested. So literally just give it a bend. Just pop clean right off that flower stalk. You can see there, that is amazing. Usually you want to harvest it while you still have a little bit of green left on the top. This is a perfect stage to be harvested. We can eat this right now in the house. It's going to be amazing. But once it gets fully golden, then you run the risk of it starting to ferment. Okay, so let me show you how we are going to prep our crown to get replanted and then also show you how we replant these suckers or slips from the mother plant. Now pretend I bought this at the store. Some people like to twist it off. I don't like to do that. I'm just gonna cut it. I like to cut as close as possible. Look at that, it's gonna be so tasty. Now, to prep this and get this ready, first thing, you wanna remove all pieces of the fruit. You don't want any of that remaining here. That will rot away your crown. So clean up as much of that as you possibly can. And then I'll go in there with my knife and I'll cut a small angle and you're gonna take little slivers off. And you see with that little sliver, it exposed a root already. So there are dormant roots hidden underneath all of these pineapple crowns. Now, if your store-bought one has brown leaves down here, highly recommend you cut those brown leaves off as well because it's slowly starting to die back is what's happening to your pineapple crown. Now that we cut into it, just take off a bunch of leaves. I would say take off at least three to four rows of leaves. It doesn't need these leaves. They're not gonna grow any bigger. They're gonna come from the middle of the access point. So axle here, the leaf axle, so you don't need to keep any of these bottom leaves. And you're just gonna help promote it, have quicker root, 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 root growth faster. And let's take a couple more just to show you. 
but pretend this is from the store. This is exactly what you're gonna do. You can even go ahead and cut back just a little further, but look at all those roots. You can actually see all those little brown spots. Those are all dormant roots ready to go, ready to be planted. Now that is ready. And all I'm gonna do now, this is the key to success with crowns. You have to let it sit and dry for at least three to five days, up to a week. Why? Because this needs to callus over. You cannot stick this in water to root out or even in the soil until this is dry. I guarantee it will rot away. You'll have best success. So this is a one, a crown that I harvested about a week ago. And you can see I did the same thing. I prepped it, I got it ready. It's all calloused over, it's all dry and this is ready to be planted now. We also have a couple other examples of crowns that I harvested. I've had a bunch of pineapples already this season, but these are all dry and ready to be planted. Slip that we just pulled off the mother plant, same exact thing, you just start pulling them off. And this is mostly calloused over already. I would say you could go ahead and plant it same day. I like to wait a day or two just in case because I don't want them to rot away or get diseases. But look at all these roots. Look at all these roots that are just ready to get in the soil and ready to be planted. That is a healthy little baby pineapple plant. That is amazing. Just goes to show you how healthy my plants are. So same deal with the slip. Now let's get right into my soil mixture. We're gonna put these down to the side for right now, which again, this can be found on my Amazon store directly down below, but we've got a big mixing container. Highly recommend you have that because that's how crazy I am when it comes to my gardening. But we have three different soils here that I mix and create my own special blend. So starting with the first bag, we use miracle Row Cactus Potting Soil. This is the orange bag. Been buying this for a long time. It's very sandy and has quite a few nutrients in it. So my soil mixture is gonna be one part cactus potting soil, one part cocoa core. And cocoa core is basically going to help with the um, nice quick drainage in the fabric pots. And then also the cocoa core allows it to hold a bit of moisture because those grow bags dry out very quickly. So one part cocoa core. And then one part sphagnum peat moss. And this is the big bag I buy. It's a three cubic foot compressed bag, but I recommend this brand. It's awesome. I get all this at Home Depot, by the way, or on Amazon if you can't make your run to Home Depot. Um, but that's what it looks like on the side. The bag is actually torn on the front, so I can't show you the exact thing. But this is straight sphagnum moss. So one part, one part, one part. Let's go ahead and fill our bin and mix our soil. We're doing one part cocoa core. One part cactus, palm, and citrus potting mix. One part Canadian sphagnum peat moss. Now we hand mix, get down and dirty. All right, I think that is pretty well mixed up. I know this looks a little labor intensive, but I enjoy playing with dirt and uh, mixing it up, but really believe that this three soil combination is just best for my pineapple plants. And um, let's go ahead and show you the pots I use to plant them up. All of my pineapple plants go through three transplanting stages and all the supplies we're talking about, that's gonna be found in my Amazon store, linked directly below in the description. So please check that out. You can find everything there that you're gonna need. So starting with the three pots here, I start with small six inch pots to root them out initially. These are great and very cheap on Amazon and I'm gonna use these for the slips, the crowns and the suckers. Then when it goes, it's time to transplant, it's very easy to know because you can see the roots popping out the bottom holes. Then it'll, they go into their second container, which is a three gallon nursery pot. And I found this to be best to allow them to really root out and get deep in the pot. So yes, both of these are plastic that they start out with. And then the final container, and again, I'll transplant once I start to see the, their roots start to stick out the bottom of the holes, I'll transplant into the final container, which is this 10 gallon fabric grow bag. Love them, they're very sturdy, and I, they last three, four years for me, and they're reusable. So this is their, ten, their final transplant container. 10 gallon is more than enough, because again, they have a very shallow root system. So let's show you how we, we transplant or plant the pineapple crown, which we have here from one dried out from last week, like we talked about earlier. And then we have a slip, and that was the leaves we pulled off. A little earlier today, we took a lunch break and came back out. So we're gonna transplant both of these right now into their, their first pot. Come over to my mixing station where we had mixed all this wonderful dirt. 
and I'm not going to add any initial fertilizer to the first step here with the first six inch pot because really the cactus dirt has enough nutrients to allow these guys to root out. What you're trying to do is trying to get them to root out. You're not really trying to grow them giant in these little pots. And now this is going to be best for you all that live in the northern climates. You're going to have to bring in your plants in the winter. That's called overwintering. Maybe you can even put them in a greenhouse. But pineapple plants are not going to last out in 40 degrees Fahrenheit and below sustained temperatures. They will suffer, they're gonna get hurt, and eventually they will die and perish in those temperatures. So you're gonna to have to bring them in in the winter. But as soon as you can get them outdoors, get them outdoors. So you see how I packed that nice and tight? We're gonna make a little hole in the middle. I already even ripped off additional leaves just because they looked a little bit dry here. No reason for them to be there. And then you just wanna be careful to not get any dirt in the leaves. It's important not to do that. You don't want to introduce any microbes to the inside of the plant's leaf axles, but just pack it tightly around the center and then water that well and put it in a sunny spot. And in about two to three weeks, you're going to have roots and it'll be rooting out pretty well. And you can tell that it's rooting out by just gently lifting on the plant and you'll feel it. You'll feel if it gives, if it gives way, it'll pull right out. But a lot of the times, like these, for instance, here's a good example. These were planted just over two weeks ago. I can pick the entire thing up. So I know right there that it's already rooted out in its, in its uh, container. And again, these little six inch pots are perfect to just get them to root out. And I like to even check like this, just gently flip it upside down and gently lift the pot. And you can tell there's already roots starting to go down. And that was about two weeks ago it got transplanted. So, it's doing just fine. I'll give it about another week before it gets transplanted into the three gallon nursery pot. For the slips, the suckers, and the raptoon suckers, same exact deal. You can see how it's kind of at an awkward angle is because the way it grew on the fruit stalk, but that's okay. Just cover that stem real well, just like that. Sometimes they like to topple over, so what I like to use is very small bamboo stakes just to keep it upright while we let it do its root out process in the next two to three weeks and we're all set. Those are gonna to go to the side, get watered well, and I'll check on them and water them about once a week. And here's just an example of a sucker that I recently planted about a week ago into its three gallon nursery pot. This is actually a sugar loaf variety and you can see it's a sugar loaf because of the, per the red and purplish that's in the color of the leaves. It's a very gorgeous plant, but these can be found in Hawaii. And I'm very excited to try my first sugar loaf of the year. So this was in a six, six inch pot and now it's in a three gallon pot and it'll sit here for a while until I see those roots coming out those bottom holes. Final step of the transplanting process, let's show you exactly how I transplant a three gallon pineapple. This is a crown from out last year, believe it or not. And we're gonna put her into our final home, the 10 gallon fabric pot. So let's go ahead and start filling it with my pre-mixture of soil here. And then we're gonna talk about fertilizer and amendments. I have pre-filled my 10 gallon fabric pot with about a third of the soil, I would say. Now let's quickly talk about the the fertilizer and the soil amendments I like to use for pineapple plants. Now, they like an acidic soil, so that's where the peat moss, sphagnum peat moss comes in. But also another key to my success, I firmly believe, is spent coffee grinds from my coffee machine. Um, I believe you can get them at Starbucks for free if you don't drink coffee, but this is what I use. This is about almost a week's supply of coffee grinds. So I would say, like once I have it about a third full, I would say there's about three cups in here. So I'm using between four and five cups of spent coffee grounds per 10 gallon fabric pot. And again, I'm not using any of these amendments in my six inch pots or my three gallons. We're just doing it in the final container because it's a mature, healthy plant. And we wanna make sure we give her the opportunity to bloom and give us the biggest fruits possible. So I'm gonna mix in this into the soil, put that to the side. The next thing I like to use are eggshells and you can see I have eggshells here that's from our breakfasts in the morning believe it or not and I just spend the time to clean them under the sink with running water and I take that little liner um, off from the inside so it's just the shell and then they dry out over time and then I literally will just come out here and crush them with my feet crush them with my hands whatever I need to do to get them to nice small pieces like this but that is calcium and then it also provides potassium and phosphorus to the soil, 
which is going to allow for bigger fruit development and you're gonna get a larger, healthier plant overall. So really, these are my two keys to success. I always say there's about 12 to 16 eggs here. There's no real, I don't have a good measurement for you guys. I would just say I take about a handful of crushed eggshells and throw them in there. And that's just with a third of the first layer of soil. Finally, my last soil amendment is going to be Epsom salt. And Epsom salt is magnesium sulfate and it's gonna provide additional magnesium to the soil. And that's gonna promote, promote better fruit development. So that's where I get giant fruits from too. So Epsom salt is great and it adds that manganese, manganese to the soil too. So really these three amendments mixed in. And again, I'm just using a handful. I would say maybe two tablespoons. So I would say about six tablespoons of Epsom salt per 10 gallon fabric grow bag. And then five, about five cups of spent coffee grinds per 10 gallon grow bag. And then the eggshells, I'm using about 12 to 16 eggs per 10 gallon grow bag. So let's go ahead and mix this up. When it comes to gardening, I am big into organic gardening. And you can see everything we've used so far is organic as well as our fertilizer. And this is gonna be mixed straight into the transplant too. So this is Dr. Earth Exotic Blend. Been using this for years. Doesn't say specifically for pineapples, but I love it. The pineapples love it. Follow the directions on the bag, but what I'm doing is the directions on the bag. We're using a cup of fertilizer per 10 gallon grow bag. So we're gonna scoop out a cup and I'm gonna add about a third right now. Put that to the side, mix it up. Quickly forgot to mention, if you feel like you need to add more aeration to your soil, you can use perlite, but perlite is actually bad for the environment. So I started buying pumice, which is literally lava rock pumice, and I'll just put a handful of it in there if you feel like you need to add extra aeration. The more the merrier for pineapple plants, because again, they do like to get wet, but at the same time, they like to dry out quickly. So you could just throw in that too if you feel like you need to have a more sandy mixture, airy, airy mixture of soil. Not required though. Here's a good gardening tip when it goes to transplanting. I basically level it up to where I think it's gonna be good and you can add or remove soil depending on how it lines up, but just take your whole pot, stick it in there, and I think that's a pretty good level. You can see where the uh, top of the base of the uh, pineapple plant is, and I think it's a pretty good level here, and that should work just fine. So we're gonna leave it right there in the middle, and let's go ahead and add soil around it. And we're also gonna add our rest of our amendments to our soil mixture now before it gets into the pot. Now that my soil is pre-mixed, everything is ready to go. I've got a dent in the pot exactly where I just put that three gallon container in there. And I'm now using a soil fungi. And this is, again, in my Amazon store, it's called Mycos, and it basically introduces mycorrhizae, which is a beneficial soil fungi that attaches to the roots of all plants. So it goes right into the planting hole, and I really believe it helps the plant take off right away and the plant won't suffer from transplant shock. I use it on everything from roses to everything I plant. Um, I love that stuff. And so now what you do to transplant, just slowly start turning it on its side giving it a squeeze on the pot because we're trying to loosen the soil compaction. And hopefully it just slide right out. And usually I like to keep them on their side. Let's see if I can do this right. Slowly hold the bottom of the, the base of the neck of the plant like so, and just support it really well. And then slowly start lifting off. And you can see how healthy the roots have gone all the way down to the bottom and the roots are gonna directly come in contact with this fungi. And that's what's gonna help it just start to take off in its brand new pot. Right in the middle, and then we're gonna take our little stakes we just had, but I'm gonna go and use those big four foot stakes I showed you earlier to lock it into place. There we go. And then I just like to fix it up around there where we just put that fungi in there. And now let's go ahead and fill it up to the top. And as you do this, just be extra careful. Try not to get it in the rosette of the leaves. You can also spray it out with a hose later, but it's just really important to make sure no dirt ends up in your plant because when we have wet seasons down here in South Florida, sometimes the soil stays too wet for too long and you don't want your plant to suffer from heart rot or root rot. And I've had that happen to both my plants over the years. It's just part of gardening, it's part of the game. 
but doing preventative steps like this and taking your time is going to just allow you to have your plant for longer and hopefully it will not ever get heart rot or root rot, but it's very devastating when that happens. And sometimes there's nothing you can do about it with the weather. And I know a lot of you guys are like, oh, you know, it takes over two years for it to fruit. Well, gardening is just not about how long does it take. If you don't have the patience to wait two years for a fruit, I don't recommend you grow them. That's not what gardening is about. It's about patience and persistence and you learn as you go. I'm always learning to this very day. So, and really gardening is kind of like a therapy, therapy to me. It's just you and your plants. All right, this pineapple crown is in its final home. I'm gonna take out these small bamboo stakes. And you can see how their root system is pretty shallow and it's already starting to topple. So in order to keep it upright and make it aesthetically pleasing to look at as well, I like to put these stakes in immediately and uh, you can adjust them as the plant grows. And the key now, you water it really well. You wanna water it to the point where water is coming out the bottom of the grow bag. The whole point of using those grow bags is that you can do it anywhere in the world. You can bring these in your house if you have space for them and a place that's gonna keep them warm in the winter, bring them indoors. It might take yours in cooler climates a little longer to fruit than it does down here in a tropical climate. I would just maybe get a grow light or get it in front of a window somewhere where it can get between six and eight hours of sunlight per day. Depending on the time of the year, that's how much sunlight mine get. Last but not least, all of my fabric grow bags sit on plant risers and the water's gonna drain freely that way they're also not sitting on the direct ground and it's gonna create more mold and fungi and allow ants and critters to climb up your pots. So it will sit on top of this riser and then that's when you'll see the water drain out of it. And again, they're bromeliads, so they don't need a ton of water. They really don't. They're drought tolerant too, but if you start to see the leaves start to get brown on the edges, that means it needs water because it's starting to pull nutrients from the outside leaves in. And you can also feel like about two inches down with your finger, go two inches down if the what feels dry it needs water and i would say during our drought season i water my pineapple plants about every 10 to 14 days but a deep watering and then during rainy season i don't even mess with them i just let let nature take its course all right guys so this one is ready to go back to her final home um, on this west wall here by my house i put my very best specimens biggest specimens. The west wall creates a microclimate actually, and uh, it's just a perfect environment for growing giant, giant pineapple plants here. This girl is going right back into the back to hopefully fruit. All of mine naturally fruit come January, February of every year. But I hope you guys learned a thing or two. If you have any other questions, please feel free to comment that down below. Um, maybe I'll do a top dressing video. Any other gardening videos you'd like to see, please Go ahead and comment down below. Thanks for watching. Until my next adventure, follow your dream and keep on catching. My next gardening video, follow your dream and keep on catching.